The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The sisters of Lazarus sent word to Jesus, saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not the end in, is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go back to Judea. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. And when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him. But Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. But Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? And Martha said to him, Yes, Lord, I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. He became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? And they said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something to this man? Would not have died, so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. And Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha the dead man's sister said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me. But because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews had come to Mary and seen what had done, began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The basis of my sermon is uh, the phrase where well, the, the answer of Jesus to those who said to him regarding the death of Lazarus, Master, the one you love is ill. So when Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not to end in death but it's for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. So it reveals to us the ultimate purpose of God for what is happening in our life and happening in the world, in the micro-universe and in the macro-universe. You may be shocked by my statement. The ultimate purpose, the highest purpose of God is not our health or happiness. Do you think the ultimate purpose why God shall cure us of our sickness is hell? No. According to this verse. Our happiness? No. According to this verse. The highest purpose is His glory. 
listen again. This illness is not to end in death. So it's not your health. But it's for the glory of God that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Because oftentimes our prayer stops only at our petition for health and for our happiness and for our welfare. And does not end in the glorification of God. Lord, give me success in life. For what? For me. No, that's not for you. For my glorification. So, he will raise Lazarus, not for Lazarus' sake, but to reveal to people the power and the glory of God. That's why when you pray, Lord, heal us for your glory. That's the best prayer and the most complete prayer. Because oftentimes we focus on what we need not on what God wants and what God, what God wants, glorification. But of course, the glory of God is man fully alive. So, the, side, the circle is complete. Your glory, O Lord, is my integrity. The glory of God is man fully alive. So, don't nagasiling, hindi ini sa akon at your expense, kundi ang glory ko actually is when you are complete and when you start worshiping me. So, when you worship me, I am glorified. And when I am glorified, I will heal you and I will take good care of you. So it's not for my glory as God. Dogahambal ako nga daw Diyos, nagnasample ko lang. Kundi para sa imo kaayuhan. So ang cycle nagapalibot. It's not this it's not different. So the love of God is the love of neighbor. You see? The love of God. How can I love you, Lord, when you love your neighbor? And how can I love my neighbor when I worship God? So it becomes a cycle. So our prayer, therefore, accommodates this today, this meaning based on the gospel. We continue to pray for happiness, for welfare, for the cure, for our scientists, for our frontliners, but never ever separate this prayer from the glorification of God. Dumduman ko, dinagyang. Kagsiling ko, Lord, patag-aman yung kabataan para dayawon kanila. You see? Wala ko nag-pray, magdaog sila lang. Kundi padaga sila, kay nagsimba sila, agod madumduman nila, ka magbalik sila, ka magdayaw sa iyo. Lord, ayuha ining tao para magdayaw siya sa inyo. It's always for the glory of God. That's why ang atong prayer is best accepted by God when we say, Heal us, Lord, for your glory. Amen.